In the deep heart of Sichuan province near shadowed cliffs, something extraordinary has emerged from the earth, not bone or stone, but wood. Preserved against all odds for hundreds of thousands of years, a collection of wooden tools has been unearthed at a site called Gantangking, challenging our assumptions about ancient technology and cognitive ability. Wood rarely survives the ravages of time, making this site one of the rarest Paleolithic windows into a vanished world. These artifacts are the oldest wooden tools documented in East Asia and offer breathtaking insights into the capabilities of Middle Pleistocene hominins. Because wood typically decomposes, the survival of these tools is astonishing. They were found in oxygen-poor, clay-rich sediments along ancient lake shores, which preserved fine details such as deliberate shaping marks, polishing and soil residues, including traces of plant fibers and minerals. Given what we know of hunter-gatherer culture, it was most likely that women were using these wooden tools for gathering plants, roots and tubers for food, medicine, and possibly making cordage for use as rope or string. This is not surprising, given the intimate arboreal knowledge demonstrated by hominins during this time period elsewhere. Detailed typological analysis reveals a sophisticated toolkit. Large digging sticks made from pine, with occasional hardwood variants, smaller handcrafted pointed implements, and hook-shaped tools likely designed for cutting or slicing underground plant parts. These pieces show consistent signs of hard hammer percussion, whittling, abrasion and edge wear, consistent with active tool use in digging or harvesting. But who made these tools? For dating, researchers employed a combination of infrared-stimulated luminescence on feldspar grains and electron spin resonance, yielding consistent age estimates spanning 250,000 to 361,000 years. These robust results corroborate that Gantang King belongs to the Middle Pleistocene. Faunal remains help confirm the Middle Pleistocene age and the subtropical open woodland environment during a warm period around 300,000 years ago. By comparison, the stone tools at neighboring sites in East Asia are crude, functional, and often monotonous. But these wooden implements show intentional shaping, possibly even crafting beyond pure necessity, and their age, likely around 300,000 years ago, places them in the same temporal and geographic neighborhood as one of the most enigmatic skulls ever discovered in China, the Dali Cranium. Dali was no lumbering brute with a club. The Dali hominin had a brain nearly the size of ours and lived in a lush, temperate world filled with elephants, rhinos, deer and forest. Wooden tools make sense here. They're lightweight, effective and fast to produce, especially in a landscape without abundant high-quality stone. If Dali belonged to a regional Denisovan population, then the presence of specialized wooden tools becomes even more compelling. It would indicate that Dali's lineage practiced diverse tool use, including perishable materials suited to subtropical and lakeside environments. And could this individual, long classified as a late Homo erectus or archaic Homo sapiens, actually represent a lost branch of humanity, the Denisovans. The Gantang King site sits at the convergence of ancient river systems and lowland valleys, an ideal location for seasonal occupation by early humans. Recent excavations have revealed a small number of worked wooden artifacts, some sharpened to points, others resembling digging sticks or throwing spears. These are not the products of random breakage or natural erosion, they were shaped and used, perhaps for hunting, gathering roots, or digging for tubers and burrowing animals. Wood decays quickly in open-air contexts. For these tools to survive, they must have been rapidly covered in fine sediment or submerged in oxygen-poor, waterlogged soil. This preservation implies the presence of wetlands or riverbanks, a vital part of ancient East Asian ecosystems that also attracted large mammals and their hunters during warm time periods. In fact, this site is very similar to the Schöningen Lakeshore site in Germany. Radiometric dating of nearby sediment and faunal assemblages suggests a date close to 300,000 years ago, placing it squarely in the Middle Pleistocene, and notably overlapping with the age range of the Dali hominin fossil, found about 1,000 kilometers or 600 miles to the northeast. 
Discovered in 1978 in Shanxi province, the Dali skull has remained a mysterious outlier in paleoanthropology. It is one of the most complete hominin crania from East Asia's Middle Pleistocene, and it refuses easy classification. Though the skull is robust, some suspect it to be a female counterpart to the extremely robust Harbin cranium. With a cranial capacity of 1,200 cubic centimetres, Dali's brain size fits squarely within the range of modern human females. Its brow ridges are prominent but arched, not straight and heavy like classic Homo erectus. The face is large and robust, yet flatter than earlier fossils. The skull lacks the true globularity of Homo sapiens, but shows a clear departure from the long, low vaults of its ancestors. What has changed the game is the discovery of the Harbin skull, sometimes called Dragon Man, and the rise of genetic data on a mysterious archaic group known as the Denisovans. The Denisovans were first discovered through a finger bone and a few teeth in Denisova Cave, Siberia. Yet from these tiny fragments came a DNA bombshell, a whole new kind of archaic human. Closely related to Neanderthals but genetically distinct, Denisovans left behind no clear skeleton, only genetic traces in modern humans, especially among populations in Southeast Asia, Melanesia and Australia. But recently, fossils including Harbin and Shiahe, a Denisovan mandible from Tibet, have begun to give Denisovans a face. Both fossils date roughly to the middle to late Pleistocene, and both show a mix of archaic and modern traits, large, flat faces, thick bones, massive molars, and robust jaws. Paleontologists have begun grouping Harbin, Dali, and possibly even Hinyushan and Zhuchang fossils into a broad, variable population, one that may represent Denisovans, or at least their relatives. If Dali represents a Denisovan, as growing evidence suggests, then Gantang King may be one of the first glimpses into Denisovan tool culture beyond stone. While Denisovan DNA reveals complex interbreeding with humans and Neanderthals, we still know little about their material culture. The wooden tools of Gantang King could be our first evidence that Denisovans, or their precursors, had woodworking knowledge, strategic cognition, and perhaps even a tradition of making spears and digging tools from forest materials that rarely survive in the archaeological record. Given the semi-tropical forest environment and river valley setting, these tools would have been essential for foraging rather than just hunting, though there is no evidence of their use for throwing weapons, as has been found in Germany. Another Neanderthal site in Germany also has digging sticks much like these Chinese tools. This further differentiates these hominins from classic Homo erectus, who typically relied on heavier stone implements and had limited flexibility in toolkits. If the Dali hominin made these tools, it suggests a population not just surviving, but innovating, adapting to new environments with subtle, perishable technology. One of the great tragedies of paleoarchaeology is that wood doesn't last. What we're missing could fill libraries, spears, fishing gear, baskets, woven mats, even early shelters. The preservation of the Gantanking tools is a miracle of mud and water logging, and it likely represents only a fraction of what these people actually made. By contrast, stone tools dominate the archaeological record simply because they endure. But when wooden tools do survive, like the Clacton Spear in Britain or the Schoningen Spears in Germany, they radically reshape our perception of ancient humans. They show planning, throwing ability, complex group hunting, and even the cognitive demands of manufacturing objects from soft organic material. Gantang King, then, is China's version of Shoningen, but in a landscape dominated not by Neanderthals, but by something else entirely, a vanished cousin, a Denisovan. Indeed, we are at the edge of a paradigm shift in understanding early East Asian humans. The Dali skull was long considered a footnote in human evolution, too modern to be Homo erectus, too archaic to be Homo sapiens. But in light of discoveries including Harbin, Shiahe, and now Gantang King, Dali may be the best candidate we have for a female Denisovan face. And the wooden tools of Gantang King, silent, delicate and astonishing, may be their voice. They speak of adaptability, of innovation, 
of ancient people who moved through forests and rivers, crafting weapons and tools from nature's most perishable gifts. They remind us that what we don't find may be more important than what we do. And they urge us to reconsider the quiet genius of the forgotten humans who once ruled Asia, not as shadows in DNA, but as craftsmen, hunters, and survivors. If we are to understand the Denisovans, not just their genes, but their minds, we may need to look beyond bones and stones and listen instead to the rarest whispers in the archaeological record, the survivors of time carved in wood, buried in silence, and waiting in the mud. The wooden artifacts at Gantangking demonstrate that, as early as 300,000 years ago, sophisticated hominins were strategically using organic toolkits to harvest plants in lakeside environments. The evidence aligns with a growing body of fossil and genetic data pointing toward Denisovans, including the Dali skull, as the likely makers of this toolkit. If so, Dali may truly represent the physiological face of the Denisovans, a lineage previously known only through genetics and fragmentary fossils. This discovery is a striking reminder that our understanding of ancient human behavior must account for organic technologies and that East Asian hominins were dynamic, technically proficient, and ecologically adaptive long before modern humans arrived. Thanks for watching and commenting.